Welcome. My name is George Pearson, and I run the How To Gurus channel here on YouTube. Most of the videos in my channel are short demonstrations of the different tools and techniques you'll find in various software programs. Right now, I have several hundred of these quick videos available on YouTube. This video, though, is different. This is part of a new series of longer demonstrations that I'm doing to show you how to complete complex projects from start to finish using a variety of techniques and tools. All of the images I use in these projects are in the public domain and I've included a link to the pictures in the video description in case you want to work along using the same images. Okay, let's move on to the project. In this Photoshop project I'm going to show you how to put images inside of text. See here's our text right there and I have a couple different images in here, just a couple different sunset pictures I have going inside of this text. Now I'm doing just a few things to this text to make it look a little more interesting. We have a bevel and emboss on this and I have a bit of a text warp going on. And you'll notice that this is still editable text. See there's our type tool right there. Still text. And the typeface we're using on this is Gil Sands Ultra Bold, which comes with you know most programs. You'll find that if you don't see it on your computer, this is an easy one to get online. Just go onto Google and do a search for Gil Sands Ultra Bold, and you'll find it downloadable online. So it's a really easy typeface to get. But for this this demonstration, all we really need is just a big fat typeface. Any big fat typeface will do. You know, Arial Black will do fine as well. Just you know, a lot of space inside of the letters is all you really need to be able to really see this effect well. If you have thinner typeface, you can still do the effect, you just won't see the image as well inside. Let me just show you that real quickly here. I'll select this. Let's change this over to something thin, like right there. So you can see we still have the coloration inside there. The picture is still inside there. It's just more difficult to actually see that picture, which is why I'm using that big fat typeface in here. Okay, let's now go ahead and do this project and see what's up. We'll start off by making a new file, and then back here I have both of these sunset pictures. And these are both pictures that I found online on public domain image websites, and the links for these are in the materials description. You'll find the links in there. Okay, let's make a new file, file new, and I'll leave it at that size, 2100 by 1500. That's pretty good. 300 resolution as we have some detail in there. We'll need to resize the images, but for this use, that's okay. There we go. Let's just fit this in the in screen like that. And then we'll put our text in here. Grab the type tool. There's the Gil Sands Ultra Bold. I should think I'll do all uppercase. just like that. Now I could resize this by selecting my type and then changing the type size right there. But an easier way to do this is just to grab your move tool, make sure you're on your type layer, and go up here to edit transform scale. And we can now rescale this to any size we want. There we go. It's real easy to do it this way. Now notice as I move back over here to my type tool and click inside here that the typeface has actually been changed. It actually changes the point size when you do that. So it's a real easy way to resize, but it still remains editable text as you can see. Okay, let's now put a nice warp on this text. Go up here to our type warping, you to it right here or up under the type menu and warp text. Same thing. I'll click on this little button for that. There's all kinds of things we can do in here. We can do it in an arc like this. We can adjust the amount of bend on that arc. We can adjust the visual dis or horizontal distortion in here, vertical distortion. You know, lots of just to make you know kind of an interesting looking typeface. Lots of different things you can do in here. There's an arch look. There's an arcing on the upper look. a bulge effect. So lots of stuff available in here. I think we'll do the arch this time. 
little bit of vertical distortion on this, a little more bend, and a little more horizontal distortion. Choose OK. I'm now going to rotate this a little bit, so let's go back up here. I'll just choose Free Transform, and let's just zoom out just a little bit here, zoom out. And I'll grab just outside of one of these corners. And I can pull that around it and reposition that. There we go. Okay, that's pretty good. So we have our basic text in here now. It's not exactly what I did before, but it's close. It's, I'm just you know playing around with it a little bit more this time. You can make the text a little bit taller. So back here to edit, free transform. Actually, let's just do scale. I'll do click on the scale and zoom out a little bit so you can actually see that control handles. There we go. Make it a little bit taller. Gives a little more space for our picture to show up. And apply. There we are. Okay, let's zoom in on that now. Actually, I'm just going to fit on screen. Now at this point, I can put the bevel and emboss on this. You can do it before or after you add the pictures. Let's just go ahead and we'll get all this stuff out of the way. So I'll click on the FX button down here. And it's just off screen, but there it is, layer style. Bevel and emboss. I'm going to choose chisel hard, inner bevel. And you can see that bevel effect right there. We can go for all kinds of different effects. I want just a little bit on the edges. We're showing it black here. That's where the image is going to go. I want to have the image inside there. So I want to have a lot of that black area showing. The image will actually be in the bevel and emboss as well. It's going to be in the whole letter, but it'll be lightened up and darkened down by that effect. So there's our bevel and emboss. Let's put a background gradient on this one. So we have a new layer here. Let's change our tool to the gradient tool. And let's just grab this one. I guess that's okay. Now we'll pull the gradient down this way. And if you want to have it perfectly vertical, just hold the shift key down while you pull. That makes it very, very vertical like that. This is simply an orange to a purple, giving us kind of an imitation sunset colors in there. Okay, so far so good. We can see this a little bit better if I come in here and on the sunset, let's bring our effects back up again and go to a color overlay. And you can see the lettering in there a little, little bit easier than that color overlay. Okay, so there's what we're, we're going to be doing. We now need to bring our pictures in here. So I have a couple of pictures. Here's one. Let me just float that out here and pull that on top. That's fine. Now it's pretty oversized as you can see here. So I'm going to bring this down. Let's just transform scale. Now I'm holding on the shift key just so that it's, it stays in proportion, but now I'm going to just make it fit the picture frame. And let's set that in place. So there's one picture, that's fine. We'll hide that one. Let's take this one now, I'll just drag this out so it's floating. And again, grab the background, pull it over. There we go, let's just close that out. And this one's also a little large as you can see here, so let's scale this down a bit, edit, transform scale, hold the shift key down to bring it down and then I'll just pull this out to fit the size. Again it doesn't matter if this is a little distorted at this point because it's just going to be inside the text and that's fine. Make it a little bit outside the edges here. Okay so we have our two pictures now. Let's just set that in place. That's one. There's another one and then below that we have our text. So all we need to do now is just to convert these into 
clipping masks. So what we want is you want your picture above your text like this and you apply it onto the picture that will then place it into into our text down here. So click on your picture, go up to layer and create clipping mask and there you go it just drops it inside the lettering just like that. And so we have kind of a a darkness up here that's that darkness that's in there so you can see that effect. Let's go up here same thing layer create clipping mask there it is I'll make that one shown. Now notice that this is in front of this one so that's the one that we're seeing. If I show or hide this notice this is in behind we don't really see that. So you can have several of these stacked if you want to and then switch between them. Now that we're at this point I can actually move that picture around inside there and even resize that picture until I get just the look that I want inside of my area. Also notice if I pull this over to the side see there's the other picture showing through so you can you can have overlapping multiple pictures so I could even pull it so I have you know one picture per letter if I wanted to. We have that kind of ability as well. But there you go it's that easy to do. Simply have your text make it nice and bold big fat text you can actually see the image inside your text put your picture above your text and then click on the picture layer and then layer and clipping mask notice right now it says release clipping mask if you click on that it just undoes that mask okay i'm going to undo the release and put those back in again so it's that easy it's a pretty simple straightforward process as you can see. Now this can be used for putting all kinds of textures inside of your letters. You don't have to be limited to this. Now if I take these in here, I'm going to hide that one. Let's go up to this one and come into our blending modes up here. If I roll down with my mouse wheel and just go through these different blending modes, notice that, that the blending modes still work as well. So you can use your blending modes inside of your text also. So you have that as another option. I'll just put it back up to the normal. There we go. Now down on the text itself, let's bring the effects back up again. Do our color overlay. Notice that the color overlay is applied on top of the color or the photograph that you're blending inside or placing inside of your text. You're clipping inside the text. So the color overlay is going to actually block your picture. Now if I come in here and adjust the opacity on this, notice that the picture doesn't show at all. So as long as this is full color overlay, we're not seeing the picture. If I come in here to our blending modes, you'll see these are also not doing anything. So you can use colored text but you can't use this trick in here to do your color. You can't use the layer style trick to add color into your text. The way to, to colorize your text would be to actually color the text using it as standard text. Let's just hide our image here and I'll grab the text triple click to select that. Let's go up here to our text color and let's just find something else in here. Make kind of a bright yellow. There we go. Back to the overlay. And notice how the clipping mask now is going inside of the image and it's it's replacing or hiding that color. If I bring the opacity down my on my image there we are bring the opacity down the image you then see the color through the image so you can blend the image and the color of the text this way that allows you to add texture into colored text and if we adjust our blending modes here I'll, I'll just use the scroll wheel on my, on my mouse to go through this notice how it's blending into the color of the text so by coloring the text this way, I have even more control over the effect in here of the color. I just you know, just kind of cycle through until you find one that you like. I'm thinking the lightening things would be better. Well, that's darker color, linear burn, color burn, darken. 
Darkens not too bad, adds a little bit of richness in there to that yellow effect. Now you can still add other effects onto this if you want to. For instance, let's go back down here to our effects, double click on the effects. Let's put a drop shadow on that. And let's adjust the distance on the drop shadow. And soften that out a little bit. There we go. So you can still add other effects as well onto this. But there it is. That is how you put an image inside of text. Simply use the clipping mask to do that. It's really easy to do and your text remains editable as you can see here. You can apply effects on it. If you need to do coloration on, on your text, make sure you do coloration at the text level and not using the effects. Okay, but that's the technique again for putting an image inside of text. Now I've pretty well covered all the possible questions in here on this fairly simple and straightforward technique, but there's one thing I want to just show you a little additional demo that you can do in here instead of our normal question and answer section. I'm going to add another layer in here and let's fill this layer with a pattern. Go over here to you know, paint bucket and pattern. And we can choose one of our patterns in here. You have all kinds of patterns to choose from. Let's grab this kind of purpley kind of thing, whatever this is. And I'll fill that layer with that. There, there we go. So it's just a, a layer filled with a pattern. Create clipping mask. And there you go. You can apply patterns inside of your text as well. It's just that easy to do. And notice again, we, we can have you know, multiple layers stacked, and they'll all be stacking down to, they're kind of passing through, as you can see here, they're passing through the clipping down to the text down below. Let's do one more of these. I'll just add another layer up in here. And let's do a gradient fill this time. Let's come in here and do a gradient fill. And I'll do the same gradient we had before, but I'll pull from the bottom to the top. Hold the shift key down to keep that perfectly vertical. And same thing, layer, clipping mask. There we go, I've now filled the text with the gradient and I put the text in the opposite direction on the gradient, which gives you kind of an interesting effect in here. And of course we have all of our blending modes and everything else as well, so I can I could blend this down and allow some of the coloration. Notice that this is now showing me some of my image here is coming through since that's on down my stack. Kind of a screen effect. There we go. I guess that uh, lightens not too bad. So we have the photograph hiding in there with a gradient placed on top of that photograph and all clipped inside of the text right down below. Okay, so there's just a couple more things you can do. You can play around with this technique of putting stuff inside. And as you can see, you can overlap these things and have multiple things showing just by using your blending modes to blend those layers together, giving you even more creative possibilities for this clipping mask technique. Thank you for watching this special Photoshop photography project video. Don't forget to subscribe so that you will get first notice of new project videos in the future. Just click on this link right here where it says subscribe here. You can get all 12 project videos in this series along with 26 special videos demonstrating the tools and techniques that I used in these projects by clicking on this link right down here. And then thank you again for watching this training video.